A couple weeks ago, I made this video showing that I was going to be following the Natalie Portman diet for 30 days. And basically what that means is just a little bit higher protein than usual, and of course, 30 days of gym. But what exactly does high protein look like for a vegan? Well, of course, there is a common misconception that vegans don't get enough protein. So first and foremost, I just wanna dispel that myth. The average person gets plenty of protein, even on a vegan diet with things like beans, nuts, legumes, grains, tofu, and seitan, which are all great sources of plant-based protein. And if you've been vegan for a while, you know firsthand that there really isn't a problem getting enough protein. But let's say you wanted to eat a little higher protein for some of your meals, if you're working out really hard at the gym, or maybe you just feel a little more satiated eating higher protein, then this meal prep is here to help. And of course, I will be showing you guys some meal ideas at the end as well. So with that, let's get started. So when talking high protein, you might not be thinking pasta right away, but let me blow your mind here for a minute. This brand in particular of pasta is 12 grams of protein for every 85 grams of dry pasta. That's about one fifth of this package and definitely enough for a serving. So we are going to cook up this whole bag of pasta in the Instant Pot. If you saw my last Instant Pot video, I was blown away at how well the Instant Pot cooks pasta, especially for meal prep. I felt like it was the perfect texture. So following the ratio from the last video, we are going to take 16 ounces of pasta pasta with six cups of water and cook that on high pressure for four minutes. And while that's cooking, we can go ahead and start washing the veggies. Once the pasta is finished and you've heard the Instant Pot beep off, go ahead and do a quick release. We don't want the pasta cooking for any extra time. So once the pin drops, go ahead and drain your pasta and give it a cold water rinse that will stop it from cooking further and help to keep it from sticking together. Quinoa is another great source of protein, which you may have heard before. One cup of cooked quinoa equals eight grams of protein. And it's also a great source of other nutrients such as folate, magnesium, zinc, and iron. Now this is the quinoa from Costco and it is pre-rinsed, so we don't need to rinse it. If you're not familiar with quinoa, there is usually a coating on it that needs to be rinsed off. Otherwise your quinoa will be a little bit bitter. So if you're using another brand and it doesn't say pre-washed or pre-rinsed on the packaging, I would highly recommend just giving it a quick rinse and that will remove any of that bitter coating. And then we're gonna cook this in the Instant Pot. Quinoa is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means for every cup of grain, you're gonna add one cup of water. So in our case, we're doing two cups of quinoa and two cups of water, and that cooks on high pressure for one minute. While the quinoa is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and start some soup. I'm just making a very simple soup base, and that way it'll be versatile enough to use in a couple different ways. We're also going to make some tofu for our protein prep. I think this is a pretty common one. Most people have tofu in their protein rotation. So this is tofu that was previously frozen. I do that so that when it defrosts, more water comes out and you can get even more marinade and more flavor into it. So I just took it out of the freezer last night and defrosted it in the fridge and now it is ready to use. So we are going to use two blocks of tofu to make chorizo crumble. This recipe is from Sam of It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken and this is so delicious and so flavorful. I've actually made this a few times before and I just swap out the oil for water and it is so so good highly recommend this recipe for our spice blend we're just going to need some chili powder smoked paprika garlic powder black pepper cumin and ground coriander and for the liquid we need soy sauce apple cider vinegar and water
And now onto our protein crepes. We're just starting with some all-purpose flour. And this right here is actually pea protein. I've just reused this container because I purchased my pea protein at Bulk Barn, which is our local bulk store. But it is only one ingredient. It is just peas. Whereas other store-bought protein powders usually will have other added ingredients and maybe even some added vitamins or supplements. So I like to use this as an alternative to other protein powders if I want something that's just one ingredient. And it's also usually a little bit less expensive than a branded protein powder. So it's just a little cost saving tip there. I would say the only drawback is that it can be a little bit bitter since there are no other added sweeteners or flavors. So just keep that in mind when you're using it and adjust your seasonings accordingly. Now adding some of that pea protein, vanilla powder, pumpkin pie spice, and ground flax. For the liquid, we need some soy milk and maple syrup. Is it just me or does the first pancake never turn out well? It feels great to have all of this prep work done. This is gonna help us out so much throughout the week. Now, if you have been wanting to start meal prep, but you're a little bit overwhelmed, you're not really sure where to start, that is exactly what I teach in my meal prep course, which is going to be launching again in just a couple weeks. So if you'd like to join us, make sure you're on the wait list. I will leave all of that information in the pinned comment down below. And now let's take this prep and turn it into some meals. Quinoa actually makes a great breakfast option. I like to serve it similarly as I would to oatmeal. So I just add a little bit of fruit and soy milk, some ground flax, and you can also add vanilla or maple syrup if you like. For our breakfast crepes, I'm just heating them up in the microwave first and then adding a bit of peanut butter and jam or you can also add other fresh fruit like banana if you want, and then topping them with a little bit of maple syrup. For our first lunch or dinner option, I'm just making a quinoa bowl with some black beans and some of our tofu chorizo crumble. And adding some salsa and fresh veggies. And you can top this with any kind of dressing you like. A cashew sour cream would be good here, or even something like an avocado cilantro lime dressing. I'll link that recipe down below. For a super simple soup option, I'm just using our pre-made veggie broth with some peas and edamame for a little extra protein. You can also add any kind of beans in there you like, something like chickpeas, cannellini beans, whatever you have on hand. I'm also adding some lemon zest and some lemon juice. This adds delicious flavor to this soup and pairs really well with the pasta. Now for this recipe, we are going to need some pizza dough. I happen to have some in the freezer, but you could also use a store-bought one if you prefer. And we're just going to top it with some sauce, artichoke hearts, bell pepper, olives, pineapple, and our tofu chorizo crumble. So just as a reminder, if you'd like to join us for the next round of the Let's Eat Plants meal prep course, all the info is in the description box and the pinned comment down below. And if you wanna see how all of this started, this video right here is where I meal prep Natalie Portman's Thor diet. There is also a free meal prep guide there in case you wanna make any of those recipes. So if you wanna see how this started, go check out that video next. And with that, Let's Eat Plants, and I'll see you guys next time.